Hey, welcome back to Everything Money. We are certainly glad you joined us again. All of our subscribers all over the world, those patrons, you know I love you. I see you joining every day, and uh, we're certainly glad to have you. Today, we're talking about HP, Paul. HP has been around for a long time. It's the leading provider of computers, printers, printing supplies, yada, yada, yada. It's, this was a little book stock last year. I owned it last year and did well. It is still a little book that beats the market stock, the magic formula investing today. Hewlett Packer, Paul, we're going to go over our new... Dun, 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 our new pillars that we've been we've been teasing you've been teasing me with a feather for months <laughs> and now the software is updated so paul go ahead and talk about our new pillars which we will show in our eight pillar analysis on our website here so two things before we get started one follow us on instagram we're trying to get the blue check marks two keep in mind this stock is hewlett packard but the ticker symbol is hpq there is another company with hp but this is HPQ, Hewlett Packard, the computer, printer, blah, 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 blah company. Uh -huh. Okay. So guys, these new pillars are awesome. And the reason they're awesome is we change them to reflect more of what we look for in a company. It's more about long-term earnings. It's more about return on invested capital. And it's more about long-term debt and how fast it can be paid off. Okay. As we go through the eight pillars, I'll explain them individually. So the market cap of HPQ, $36 billion. Their five-year PE, so now what we're doing is we're taking the five years of earnings and taking the average and then multiplying, dividing the market cap by that, and we want it to be under 22 and a half. So this is an upgrade from our former PE number. Which was just only based 20. on one year. Yep, so. We still have the one-year PE of 9.8 here, but we're looking at the five-year PE of 10.36. That's a check mark. Yeah. Profit margin, we're not even looking at that anymore over here, but it's 6.1%. Now what we're doing is we're looking at the five-year return on invested capital. We want it to be over 9%. It's actually 48.3. How are we calculating this? Hewlett Packard actually has negative equity in their shareholders' equity, so it's really driving down their invested capital. There are many, many ways to calculate invested capital. We'll get a five-year free cash flow divided by long-term liabilities and equity together. So 48.3%, that is a check mark. Keep in mind, guys, dividend yield of 2.7%. This is a pretty healthy dividend. Not bad, Seth. yeah. The market's 1.3. This is over double. And it pays about a billion dollars in dividends. And if you look at their free cash flow over the last five years, they could easily cover that in their last five years free cash flow and last year's free cash flow even easier. Okay. So, so far we have two checks. Revenue growth is pillar number three over the last five years, Paul. Okay. 49.5 to 61 billion. Check mark there. I don't know what acquisitions they made, but keep that in mind. Big companies tend to make acquisitions. I would assume pillar number four, the profit is going in the same trend. Well, Seth... Funny you should mention that, it is. 2.44 to 3.7, up about 50%. And how about shares outstanding? We want the share count going down. Hopefully they're buying back, Paul, not diluting us. You know how this works. And this is a very important metric, which is why we're not changing it. 1.6 now, 9 billion down to 1.23 billion shares. Definite check mark there. If you'd like this software behind Paul, you might be asking, where can I get it? And our patrons asked this for months and we finally decided we could provide it for them. Paul, you made you and Tim with the developers made this software. It's absolutely incredible. You can get all of it right now by clicking the link below. And Paul, tell us about it. Mobile app, eight pillars, 30 years or more of financial data, stock analyzer tool, which we'll use today. Access to all three of us. Guys, we're gonna do more and more content just for people who have the app and the website. Uh, stock screeners, retirement calculator, big thing here. Discord community. We currently have 5,100 people in our Discord community that are talking every day about all investments, value, crypto, everything out there. They're talking about it. Guys, look at this. 84 cents a day. Less than a crappy cup of coffee. You get all of this. Paul, our if I could put this into perspective before you even say that, like there are some other hype YouTubers out there that for this literally the same amount of money, you get one Zoom chat a month. They're begging for your support. We are giving you access to this software, which Paul, Uncle Paul pays a ton for hundreds of thousands of dollars for his data. And we're giving a it to a, a year and we're giving it to Plus our the developers. And if you want to trade, you can trade with Mo. We'll go over and, and look at and look at how to trade HP here in a moment. Once we get back to our pillars, but Paul, there's no it's, it's not even a competition, not even a competition in, in terms of joining a Patreon, what, what you get in terms of what you pay. So go ahead, Paul. So, guys, the next pillar. Um, this is your actually changing. Yeah. So this is one of the ones I like the most. What we're doing now is we're looking at long-term liabilities, 9.8 billion and dividing it by the five-year average free cash flow. So 9.88 billion divided by the five-year free cash flow of 3.75. That takes us to about 2.6 or so. We want it to be under five. So what it says is it would take 2.6 years if they took all their free cash flow and decided to pay off their debt. 
We want them to be able to do it under five years. HP can do it under sixty, under under um two and a half years. Awesome check marks. So there. Paul it took me three years to memorize these pillars. So expect patrons out there. Expect me to know this by a, a mere twenty twenty five. I'll have it down. Pat. Which is fine because the dumber you are, the better it is for all of us. Great <laughs> free cash flow. <laughs> I always know it's the big mamma jamma. Let's Love get after cash it. Flow. Go for it, baby. All right, guys. I added this line to the free cash flow statement. That way, it tells you without having to do the math yourself. 2.59 to 5.52 check mark, which is an average of 3.75 times our metric of 20, $75 billion. Wow. The actual market cap is 36 billion, Paul. Less than half, guys. So what we're going to do now is, this is probably not a fast growing company. So we're going to go put it in the stock analyzer tool after Mo goes to the charts and we'll decide. So far, I like, let's look at the eight pillars tab, actually. Is okay. it all eight? Oh, it's boy. all eight check marks. Look at this. Even on the new metrics, it's all eight check marks, wow. guys. Everything here. So we like everything. What's our next step? Without doing too much due diligence, is it selling for a price that seems reasonable? We're going to go into our stack analyzer tool and make some assumptions and go from there. Mo, I can't imagine there's volume around this boring, slow trending stock. You know, there's an interesting one. There's a lot to learn from this. Um, let's start over here. So this is the daily chart. And you can see this was, this was a power stock. It was on top of all four major moving averages, making new highs. And the party kind of ran out of steam here. It had good, consistent volume. It was just consistent. And then it all fell apart. So this is an example of a power stock being a power stock and then just falling apart. Now let's pull it up from a long-term perspective just so we can draw in some support lines. So right here, I'm just going to draw a line right here. And that's a support line. So I don't foresee you falling much further than this on this snapback. Um, but let's even move in a little bit closer because there's a gap here to fill. I'll get that out of there. Here, wait a second, hold on. This is that gap. So there's a gap right here that needs to be filled. And you can definitely fill that. So if this trend continues and we just get some volume in there and get some engulfing candlesticks, you definitely have this gap to fill that's at about $33 a share. So there's a lot of, a lot of things to learn from this stock from a trading perspective. Um, the, I, I put this in the Bidness Nation. I said, guys, watch this thing Mo, because I want that gap to when fill. When you pull back to the long-term yes. chart, it's astounding how your rules just seem to play in so well. Yeah why other traders I see on YouTube, they make it seem so difficult. They're following, they follow news, they're, they're waiting for earnings. It's just like you have these simple rules, stochastics, and they just yeah. always seem to. It's pretty easy. I mean, it really is. <laughs> I've made it it's so It's almost simple. too easy. I don't know. Like, oh, I don't know. Like right there, would have hit the sweet spot, got yeah. it off a candlestick, well, you buy it and it goes up. And by the way, it's funny you mentioned that. One thing that I've realized over time is the more complicated you make it, the worse it happens, the worse it goes. That's just it. Investing, it's one of the, it's, it's very, very simple. The simpler you make it, the more likely you are to be successful. That's it. And that works. And we always think investing needs to be this overcomplicated, like all these charts. No, just keep it very simple. Same thing here with trading. Keep your rules very simple. I was even joking with Mo yesterday. I said, Mo, like, do you want to learn more rules? He's like, no. And I'm like, yeah, you're right. Why co complicate it? Just stick to what works. And are there methods that probably do better than Mo? Absolutely. Oh, but really? how complicated are you getting then? Yeah. Well, Paul, we, uh, we did a reaction video of CoffeeZilla, and he exposes a lot of scammers. And, and scammers inevitably always make it sound this simple, Mo. You yeah. just make money. You just click a couple buttons, and it's so simple. Well, Down there's got to be a process. Download that. my free PDF, Paul. And that's but anyway, money. Yeah, but it's like when you look at your charts, I keep applying your rules in my head. And it's yeah. like that should have happened, and there it is. And that yep. should have happened, and there it goes. And there it goes. Are, you, are you doing the trading? I, I'm, still, I'm still learning. Oh, good. And uh, I invested some of the, the trading money I had. I just I don't think I'm in a spot at the moment to, to dedicate the hours. I need to per week at the moment. So sell your magic the gathering yeah. cards. <laughs> so I do have a, a very large stake See what in I did there, folks? Magic the Gathering cards, which is really taking up a majority of my life. I really threw that in there. So. But no, I do like I'm 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 still I'm in the learning. I'm, I'm mm -hmm. paper trading in my mind. In, your, in my mind. <laughs> You're up 84% this year so oh, of far. Of course. I mean, just like, like other YouTubers. So. Yeah. All right, Paul, the stock analyzer tools behind you. You get this as part of our Patreon, and this will help you determine what price you should be paying for HP, Paul. You know this. So I got some great news. I wondered how much of the growth was from acquisitions, and they don't have much in acquisitions over the last few years. Now, even though their revenue is down over the last 10 years, I wonder if they sold some assets along the way. So the past five years have done pretty well. I'm going to do two, three, and 4% revenue growth. Share buybacks. I mean, look how aggressive they are about share buybacks. Jeez. I'm still going to be conservative because I believe in that. Profit margin, again, I look at 10 years. It's, about, it's lower than the last five years. But I'm going to stick to somewhere in between, but closer to the last five years. PE, I'm going high side 15P on this. It's a big company, a lot of competition. And my usual returns of 15, 12 and a half, and 10. 
Hit the analyze button. Ooh wee! <laughs> Ooh wee! Sticky icky. Guys, look at this. I mean, we're really close to. We're ten percent away from the absolute lowest of low. This is why I have I have puts on this sold. I think this is a great idea. I think do some more research, figure out the revenue. If they're consistent, the share. I mean, look at the share change alone, Seth. That could be if they just continue to do what they've been doing before. They're it's all day long, a, a $30 a stock. Yeah. I mean, this is incredible. I was conservative in all this. This is what we like doing, guys. Find conservative companies. Now you're out there going, but HP's boring. Exactly. exactly. That's exactly what we want to find. Boring companies don't get the hype people following them, don't get the average person following them, so they don't bet the price. The price stays low. We love that. Yeah, that is our take on HP. It's and I love the debt thing. The long-term debt, 2.6 years, they can pay off all their debt, and they're paying a 2.7% dividend. I might actually just initiate. I don't think I have a shares of this thing, do I? You don't own it. I, I don't own it. I think I just have puts, but I might I might buy some right now. An interesting take. HP, another little book stock. It's still slaying even after a little bit of a run up. That is our take. If you like this style of investing, finding boring companies that are currently undervalued so you can make a profit on them, as opposed to chasing down hype companies that are currently overvalued. Um, yeah, it's, it's a tougher road, Paul. Again, you, this doesn't sound fun to talk about at parties when people are just all in glad handing themselves or buying Tesla and you and I are buying HP behind the scenes and being quiet about I'm it. I'm actually putting an email in right now to my to my uh, Merrill guy saying, putting an order in for HP. Now guys, keep in mind, I've done research on them. I have puts on them. So I was already selling puts on them, but we never did the thorough analysis. I've already like what I read about them and I put a small order in and start the position and start building up from there. That's our take. Join the Patreon, fondle the thumbs up. We'll see you on the next video. Appreciate it.